How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be doing a box step in carpet. We are going to show you how to upholster all sides of this step, get it nice and tight, and have it look fantastic. Stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and cut our tack strip, get our tack strip installed on the step, then we'll be ready for some pad. So what I like to do right here is take and push my tack strip all the way up against it right there, and then just slide it maybe uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch away from this wall. That's going to be our good, our good gap, our good gully between the end of the tack strip and our wall over here. So 3 sixteenths of an inch. And I'm not going to cut this flush. I want to cut it just about a quarter inch or so shy from the end of the step right here, okay? I'm going to do the exact same thing over here on this side. I'm going to push it up against it right here. Cut it about uh, uh, e even right here with the edge of my step right there. And as I did, as I did on my last video, since this pad is going to be wrapped down over the edge, I'm going to take and cut my tack strip right here at an angle once again. Okay, that gave me a nice angle right there on my tack strip. You can see right there. Once again, we're going to place the tack strip about 3 sixteenths of an inch away from the wall. Cut me a piece over here to stick on the side of my riser. Once again, I'm going to cut this at an angle right here so that I can put my pad over to the edge. These are actually brand new blades in this, but my wrist is just not up to par where it should be. So this actually worked out perfect right here uh, on the length what I had left. I want to butt my tack strip over there so that it touches right over there. But yet I wanted about 3 sixteenths to a half inch short on this side. So that worked out just perfect right there. Go ahead and get that nailed on. Once again, I'm keeping my tack strip about 3 sixteenths of an inch off of the floor right here on the bottom. Definitely do not want your tack strip sitting on the floor. So I got me a piece of pad here, just pretty much rough cut, uh, definitely bigger than what I need. I'm going to go ahead and lay it here and just get it halfway cut down the side. That way I think working on such a big piece. And then after I get it on the step and stapled on, I'll be able to go from there. So what I want to do is go ahead and lay it on here. I'm going to line one of my pieces of tack strip. That way I'm not cutting every single piece. I want to pull it all the way over against this wall right here for sure because we want our nose, we want the pad to come on the nose of our step all the way over to the wall as far as we can get it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and choose to line the back tack strip right there. And again, it's flush here. Go ahead and put some staples in it. No need to go crazy, just, no, just holding it in place, okay? And we got more than enough here, so cut some of that off. I'm going to go ahead and staple, pull it down. Now what I'm going to do is just pull it down 
over the edge, that's going to pull it tight. So whenever I staple, I don't have this bunched up pad right here on my step like that. I want it to be halfway snug. I don't want it necessarily stretched, maybe just a tad. I'm just preventing it from having a big bubble in the pad right here once I get done, okay? Now I want to get semi-close. I want my staples semi-close to the tack strip here on the bottom of the step. I just don't want them way up here, okay? Because I want my pad to be fastened off close to the tack strip, okay? If it's not, it's just going to be like all flapping and stuff like that down here. We don't want that. So we want to try to get our staples halfway close down at the bottom there. here on the bottom and I'm going to let my blade ride right up against the tack strip there and just slice that right off there. So you can see I got my staples uh, about an inch from my tack strip is what I got them. That's going to be plenty close enough. It is puckered out just a little bit there. That's going to be just fine. Now if it was up here it would be flapping out a couple inches or an inch or so from the bottom of the step there. So that, that wouldn't be good. So. Over here on this other side of the step, we want to take and pretty much cut it off flush with the side of our step, okay? We don't want it to be overhanging or anything like that because we're going to have to do some stapling right here on this point. So we do not want any pad right here on this, okay? So let's just cut this off uh, flush with the side of the step. We do not want it short by no means. If somebody steps on the side of the step, we want them to be able to feel pad whenever they step there okay so we don't want uh, we don't want it to be short we want them to step on pad a lot of times when people are exiting uh, another room from up there a lot of times they will actually step right here on the corner of the step so we definitely want some pad on that corner right there okay so this is what we got with our pad all the way up to the tack strip in the back and over on the edge, if you can see it right there, we got it down all the way over on the edge. We actually got it bead over all the way to the side of our wall right there. That way the hoe nose is protected. Okay, so you might have guessed it. What's next? Exactly right. We are going to protect this edge of our step of the pad with duct tape, just like I do on every other set of steps. I think I've been over this before. Uh, what this does, I've noticed over the years that I've installed, when people will take the seams of their pad just in an open room on concrete floors or something like that where you cannot staple the pad down, a lot of times people will take the pad seams and glue around the edges. I've noticed um, over time whenever pad is wore down and wore thin throughout the whole room, the part that actually has tape on it where they tape the seams is a lot less wore out. It's actually still got some thickness to it. It's not smashed flat and stuff like that. So that led me to believe and prove to me that tape protects the pad from the backing of the carpet. There's no other explanation for that. So that is simply why I put that right here on the crease of the step where the pad is gonna break down the most and the fastest, it's gonna get some extra protection right here where it definitely needs it. So that's the reason why I do that. And instead of stopping my pad right here on the front like I did over here, when a person ties their carpet off here at the bottom and starts to stretch up, say if I was going to do that, if I was going to do that over here on this side and then stretch up, a lot of times what'll happen is it'll just roll the pad up like that. I couldn't tell you how many times in my career I've actually pulled carpet off of the steps and seen the pad smash back like that, folded back like that, and it's just been like that the entire 
lifetime of the carpet installation. As long as it's been installed, it's always been like that. And it's just wore flat and mashed like that right there, folded back. So whoever has uh, walked on those steps or anything has actually walked on the, the edge of the wood as long as they've been installed because the pad is folded back like that, okay? So that is one more reason why we like to wrap the pad all the way over the edge versus straight off the top. so we're not going to double it like we did on the last video where we needed to tack it up underneath the lip on those steps right there. Okay, so now to get our carpet cut big enough to cover the top and the front and the side of this step, we need to make sure that we have our carpet cut big enough to do all that. I'm fixing to show you how really quick. So what you want to do is take and push your tape measure all the way to the back wall right there. Hold it flat with one hand, take, bend it down with your thumb. Your tape measure is not going to break bending it backwards like that. It's used like that all the time. So we got 18 and a half inches. I'm going to cut this about 21 inches. We never, ever want to cut carpet exact, okay? You always want to leave yourself plenty to work with, okay? So from 18 and a half to 21, uh, that's giving us a few extra inches, two and a half inches or something like that. Uh, now let's go from the side. Over there, make sure that we got enough to reach all the way and cover this side right here, okay? We definitely got to do that. So once again, I'm going to take, push my tape measure all the way to this wall right here. Same thing, take, bend it backwards over my step. And right here, I've got 39 inches from this side all the way down and over is 39 inches. So I'm going to cut that 42 inches. That's going to give me plenty of carpet to work with, uh, 21 by 42, okay? Let's cut some carpet. So carpet has a direction like velvet. If you ever take a rub velvet or something, you'll see it uh, rub it one way, it's dark, rub it another way, it's light. The way it rubs and it's light, that direction is laying down, the fibers are laying down. If you rub it and it gets dark, the fibers are standing up. So that is direction in carpet. So what we wanna do is always have our carpet running down the fibers laying down, going down over the step versus going up or sideways, okay? We always want to have them going down. You're going to have the best look out of your step if you can have your carpet fibers running down, okay? So you always want to think about that and keep that in your mind whenever you're cutting your steps because you have to cut them for that direction, okay? I'm going to go ahead and get me a straight edge right here um, and then I will take my bottom cut off of that right there. So let me go ahead and give me a straight edge cut right here. And then I will just use this straight edge as a reference point for my other cut. Okay, now let's see here, it's laying down that one. So that's gonna be my bottom. I wanna make sure that is nice and straight, okay? Since I cut this straight, I can now use my T-square T on this right here and just get it, line it up on the straight edge. I know this is going to be nice and straight. didn't push down hard on this. The reason for that is since the carpet is laying down this direction, my fibers are sticking out. I don't know if you can see that right there or not. My fibers are sticking out this direction. I did not want to cut those fibers off. It would make my, the bottom of my step look a little funny, okay? So we definitely wanted to keep these fibers on here. So 
I did not bear down on my blade and let it rub the floor all the way over or else I would have cut those fibers off, which I do not want, okay? So this side is going up against my wall. This side is going to wrap over the side of the step. With that being said, this side does not need to be straight edged at all, okay? Because it's simply wrapping over the step and it's going to be cut off. This side we want straight edge and the bottom we want straight edge. Our wall side and our floor side of the step. Okay. So let's come over here. I'm just going to cut it uh, 42 inches like I said right there. No need for a straight edge. Okay. Right here is my 21 by 42 inch piece of carpet. It's going to go boom just like that right there on the step. And it is laying down over the step just as I explained. Okay, so we're going to take our piece of carpet here, throw it up here on the edge like that, and line this side of our step right here with this wall. What I mean by line this side of the step is I want to take and butt my carpet directly up to this side and make sure that my carpet is straight with this side of the wall. Okay, that's going to give me a straight reference right there. Whenever I pull it down, it should be nice and straight with the floor also, okay? And it's not going to make, it's going to, Make sure that I do not have too much here or be too short right here, okay? So we definitely want to line one side right here, the only side that we got in this case. Okay, so we got our step here. I'm going to take right here at the bottom and just push it in like so. I'm actually going to take my stair tool, my stair tool here, and just kind of tuck it in right there. Now, a lot of, a lot of guys will take and rub their stair tool over the tack strip like that right there. I don't like to do that. I actually demonstrated in a video uh, here recently that whenever you take and you rake your stair tool across the pins in the tack strip, yeah, your carpet may be getting a good bite on it because you can hear your stair tool, stair tool click, 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 click uh, across the teeth of the uh, tack strip. So yeah, you're, you're definitely mashing the teeth of it all the way through the backing of the carpet. Cool, but what you're also doing is you're taking the pins in the tack strip and you're actually bending them over, you're doling them up where they're not going to be as sharp and you're, a lot of times, you're just running them. You're flat out running them. If a person needs to use them again, when they pull that carpet up and reuse the tack strip, which happens a lot of the times, um, those, those tack strips are going to be bent over, dull, and they're not going to perform the way they should for the very next install. Or even if you need to pull it up and redo it uh, for whatever reason, say you have a bubble left on your step and you need to re-push it up there. Because you've already done that, now your tack strip is not going to perform the way it should. So that's why I choose not to click, 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 rub my stair tool across my tack strip. Anyway, I got it all pulled in here all nice and tight down here at the bottom. Now, uh, I'm going to take my stair tool again, like I was talking, and just rub it right underneath the tack, right underneath the tack strip like that. Now I've got a nice finished edge there. What I want to do now to keep this from uh, slipping up off my tack strip whenever I kick it up that way, I'm just going to put a couple tacks right in my tack strip right there. Just a couple staples. It ain't got to be no huge amount or anything like that. It's something simply just to hold this in place. The tack strip's going to grab. This is just going to make sure it don't slip. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now I got you looking in from the side, so you should be able to see really nicely what I'm doing there. Okay, again, we got it all tied off here. I'm going to go ahead and take my knee kicker, and I'm going to start right here in the center. And I'm going to make sure that this gets really good and snug in the center. Okay, got really, really tight right there. Take, mash it down behind my strip, and it's going to catch right there on the tack strip. That is super tight now. Same thing. Mash it in there. Now, my first stick was straight on. My first kick was straight on right there. Now, if you'll notice, my kicker is at an angle this way a little bit. Since I am working to the left of my step, I want to have my kicker angled to the left. Okay. Now, 
that's going to be good. Now I'm going to work to the right of my step, so I want to angle my kicker to the right. Step all nice and tight. We don't have to worry about that going anywhere. Super tight all over the place. Now what I want to do, I'm going to take my rubber mallet right here and I'm just going to crease that in there really good and then I'm going to take and cut it off. I choose to use a rubber mallet just because it's quieter on this. This mallet here has a weight in the middle of it so it's still got a good a bit of weight on it. It's getting a really good drive in the gully of my car right there. So this is stuck really good. Okay. We'll go ahead and cut this off right there. I'm going to stop right at the edge of my step. I want you guys to see that. Okay, so whenever I was cutting, I stopped right here. If I fold the carpet back, you can see the actual edge of my step is right there okay how about that there we go so the edge of my step is right here i want to definitely stop my cut right there so i'm going to take my knife right to that edge right there and i'm just going to cut it up okay you don't have to go at an angle or anything like that just don't go this direction okay there we go go ahead Tuck that in there again, break it down. Now the top of this back here now is all complete. This whole edge right here is complete now. Take a look at that. All nicely done right there. Now, what I was talking about a while ago about, hear that, I'm not doing it hard because I don't want to do exactly what I was talking about, but I can definitely, before I even done that, I could feel the tacks right here already okay that's just because it's got a good stretch on it okay if you get a good stretch on your carpet when it tries to pull back as i kick that carpet up and the carpet tries to come back i am mashing it down on that tack strip so what happens is when that carpet comes back the teeth of that tack strip actually go they penetrate the back end of that carpet and stick through if the carpet has tension on it trying to come back because those nails are at an angle that way so if you get a good stretch, you don't have to do all of this stuff like that and make sure, because it's going to get a good stick anyway. So these tacks are definitely sticking through all over the place, okay? I don't want to get too crazy because they're going to poke me. Anyway, we got this all nice and tight. Let's work on the side of the step. Okay, now what we want to do is where this part of the step meets this part of the step, we're going to take and cut our carpet okay I like to cut from the back at all times so I'm going to reach underneath with my blade and I'm going to make a cut straight out on that just like that step is I'm going to make a cut straight out right there okay I just fill it with my fingers pierce it cut straight out okay now we got this is what we've got now okay so this is going to go around there pretty good I'm going to go ahead and take and cut some of this off I don't need all of this it's just going to be in the way there so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off I will go ahead and take this piece now I'm going to try to go slow here I'm going to go ahead and take this piece of carpet here I'm going to push it down in here and cut this off right here make this back of the step right here really good what I'm going to do there is just take my knife at a 45 degree right there it on out so what I did there I gave me just a little bit of a line to go by if you see the rip if you see the cut in it right there now I can just follow that line right on down and finish it up right there boom really nice okay now I'm gonna cut my bottom off so that that is I'm what I'm doing I'm whittling all this away and getting rid of all the extra carpet that I need okay Again, anytime you're doing flush cutting, always hold your knife at a 45 degree angle. 
If you don't, you're either going to be too long or too short, okay? I want to go ahead and take, throw this back and get it out of the way right there. I'm going to take, come from my corner point right there, straight down at an angle. Don't have to be anything fancy or anything like that, okay? Because what we're going to do now is we're going to take this and we're going to trace that line right there with this point right here, okay? Okay, now what I'm doing right here, I don't want this sticking out over my edge right here, okay? Because when I try to wrap this around, this is going to be in the way. So I'm just going to take and shave a little bit off of this right here, just so it's not in my way. Now you don't want to do too much right there because when this wraps around, we don't want our corner to be messed up right here, okay? So definitely don't take too much. I pretty much got it flush with this right here, okay? That is what we want. Now that I got that, I'm going to take, mash this in there nice and flat, pull this around. Well, there we go. Now I want to take and trace cut from our corner right to that right there. I'll probably just take, put me a couple little cuts right here and connect the dots right up through there. Okay. Now I'm going to close that right there. Now you can see what I got right there. So I got a line right there, a cut right there, a cut right there, and a cut right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take and connect those little dots right there, okay? Cut, 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 and then straight off right there. So again, I'm going to just connect those cuts right there. Just didn't know if you was able to see that or not, or if I had my big fat hand in the way. All right, let's see what this looks like. I'm probably going to have to cut a little bit on that corner. That's usually what ends up happening, end up happening whenever I do this. Okay, yes, so I definitely need to trim a little bit more off of that corner. I'm actually going to take about an eighth of an inch off of this whole side right here where I just cut that. There's really not any science to it. What you're doing, you're just eliminating material until you get it right, okay? Now, there's probably a lot of guys that can do this all on a first try. The people that do steps on a daily basis can just bam, bam, bam. Okay, so right here, now we are looking pretty daggum good right there. I got just a little bit right here, needs to be cut again. So once again, I'm just eliminating material. You definitely want to keep a sharp blade on this, okay? This part right here is the most crucial part of the entire step, okay? If you mess up right here, it's going to be disastrous. So definitely keep your sharp blade so you're not pulling strings and you end up with a real sloppy looking cut, okay? Keep this cut nice and clean as possible. Okay. Let's check this out. good right there. I'm going to take that little bit of a point off right there. Okay. All right. We got her. Let's put some staples in it and we're going to be good. Okay. So when this closes up, looky here, it should fit right together perfectly like that. Okay. Now, when that goes together, you're not going to be able to see that whatsoever, okay? That's going to be absolutely perfect. The denser the carpet is, the more precise you got to be on this. I have voluntarily chosen to use a very easy carpet to do this with, okay? So, you definitely, it wants to, you want to close it up just like you was making a seam on carpet, okay? It needs to close real beautifully there, okay? So to staple this together right here, I am using the crane power tacker right here. It don't matter whether you start with this one or this one. Actually, since the carpet is laying down this direction, this nap is actually overlaying this nap. So I'm going to do this one first and then work this one over it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and staple this piece. 
you don't have to staple right directly on your seam. In fact, it's better not to. I'm going to stay just maybe a quarter inch or so away from the seam. That way I don't do any damage to the very exterior of the, the very edge of the carpet. Okay, this is all closed up. Now I want to work this piece right to it, okay? Now this is, you don't want this overlapped or anything like that, okay? So if you notice, I'm actually turning it just like that so I can work it together just like a seam, okay? And I hope I don't get my big noggin in the way there. This is a really important part too right here. Instead of just tack, 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 I don't know if you can notice or not, I'm actually wiggling the nose of my staple gun a little bit and I'm separating the fibers out right there so I'm not um, fastening the fibers of the carpet to the step, okay? That's gonna create a whole bunch of little dimples. You do not want that. Now, I've got just a little bit of loose strings right here I wanna take shoot directly into the point of the step and that's going to pretty all of this up and also protect that step. Okay, notice I got just a little bit extra here. I'm gonna go ahead and take and cut that off right there. It's gonna be one, one final step to this once I get done with this part and we will be done with this step. Okay, that's gonna hold that all in place. Now I'm gonna look at this. Anything that I have that's not supposed to be showing, I'm gonna take and trim up any little hairs sticking out or anything like that. I want this to look real pretty, okay? All right, that looks pretty daggone good. Let's go ahead and kick this step over that direction and we're gonna be done. Okay, so the last thing I need to do to this step now since I've got this complete side done, this side done, everything is done. Now I just wanna kick right here a little bit because I put my tack strip over here on this side and on this side right here. So I'm gonna pull my riser that way and I'm gonna pull the top of the step that way, okay? I'm gonna lay my kicker sideways just like that, and I'm gonna get me a kick on the riser. Okay. Tuck that in the tack strip, pushing it on the tack strip as I let go of the kicker, and that will make, cause the tacks to go through the back end of the car. Okay. just don't work so you just pull it off there okay really nice look all the way around this step this is the side where the cut is the cut actually goes from about here right down through there you don't see any staple marks you don't see any anything it looks like it was just made like that this corner of the step is all nice and rounded looking a little bit it's got a nice look to it over here on the back all nice and clean. The step itself, definitely nice and tight. Let's take a look at the front here. Okay, here we go. Everything is nice and clean. Nice and clean up against the wall, up against the wall, and on that back wall right there. That's the importance of proper tack strip placement, okay? That would not look like that if those tack strips were too far away. Rather, this one here at the bottom was too high, or these over here on the sides were too far. 
about three sixteenths is key, okay? Notice you can look flat down the edge of that step. You don't see any waves or anything like that. It's just completely flat. That is exactly what we want right there. Alrighty, that's it.